So morena koutou katoa. Thank you so much for joining the session. Um, my name is Bridget Yonker. I'm with the New Zealand Land Care Trust as National Catchments Manager. And uh, we are the extension partner for the Access to Experts uh, service. Um, let's get into it. So mata poporetia te wai, mata poporetia te whenua, mata poporetia te tangata, titia ki te rangi, titia ki te papa, ki te papa titia ki te whatumanawa. Māori ora. And with that, I'd just like to set our intent for the session, which is effectively to provide an overview of the Access to Experts service, to give a status update on what has been done to date, and to showcase a few key examples. And at the end, we'll answer a few questions that you may have, but please feel free to just pop those into the chat box as we go, and we will um, we will answer them as, at the end. But if they're relevant to a specific section, I will just interrupt the team to, um, to answer that at the time. I'm going to hand over to Ray, who um, is the lead on this project, and he will intro the team and the service. Over to you, Ray. Uh, thank you, Bridget, and tēnā koutou katoa, ko Ray Chang toko ingoa. Uh, I am the project director for the Access to Experts service, uh, backed by MFE, and um, joining me today is Gemma Wadworth, who's sitting physically to my left, so if uh, I point to someone, that's whom I'm pointing to. Um, and she'll um, be um, speaking to a few of the case studies that we've been delivering as a few examples um, of the service to date. Um, we don't want to take too much of uh, your time um, today uh, telling you about the nuts and bolts of the service, but really keen to hear uh, your questions about how we're operating um, and um, the kind of types of things that you're interested in getting support in. We're happy to answer those questions um, further down the track, as Bridget alluded to. Um, so um, Access to Experts is a service that is supported by uh, the Ministry for the Environment, and um, we're looking to um, connect with community groups, councils, and iwi to um, come alongside them, to give them um, support in the way of accessing freshwater expertise that are out there, um, consultants, Crown Research Organisations, people that have been doing this across the country in New Zealand for um, how you might be responding to or what the impacts of the essential freshwater reform package might be in your specific use case. So um, we um, really are looking to connect users such as community groups or catchment groups with technical expertise to help um, understand what might be going on in a catchment, maybe give some advice around um, uh, what kind of uh, outcomes or monitoring of outcomes might be relevant for you in your use cases, um, and also to help you build a bit of um, capacity, uh, sorry, a bit of capability around um, those things that might be happening in the environment um, that might um, be useful from a technical support lens. Um, it's not just all about the science and the water quality specialists. Um, there are some planners or facilitators or um, a range of other experts uh, that we have access to on our panel at the moment, and we're building that uh, daily, uh, weekly, really. Um, and we've, for example, uh, have Te Mana o Te Wai expertise, Mahinga Kai expertise, a range of other um, services, all aligned with the freshwater reform package. Um, it's quite a complicated slide here, but I just wanted to um, highlight the general operation of how we work. So um, we uh, look to work with users um, that are approaching us through various channels. We have um, a range of NZLT coordinators that uh, you may be connected to already, um, and you can talk to them um, who are part of our team to shape projects and bring them uh, into the mix for consideration. We also have a website, um, we have a um, phone number that you can call, we'll share that um, in a little bit, and we even have a chatbot and we've actually had someone use it. Um, it's been an interesting process. Um, but in, in general, um, you can access the um, service a few different ways and we um, have a range of experts that we already have on our panel that we're ready to match you up with. We try to use local expertise um, but if you have a preferred specialist that you know and would like to work with we're happy to bring them onto the panel as well. 
So we think uh, we assess the case for suitability. There are some core things that we need to meet to um, support that from an MFE perspective, um, but we bring that together in the brokerage, the access to expert brokerage. Um, we introduce the um, your kind of uh, needs to the expert. Um, we kind of match make effectively. Uh, we do some paperwork in the background um, and we work with the experts to put in place the contractual elements that we need to make sure that they're delivering good work um, and that we are able to pay for them. We also have a bit of a feedback loop that we um, try to get with both the experts and user groups where we're just checking in on how the delivery has been through the course of that um, uh of that piece of work that we've been working with. So uh, really keen to get feedback and hear about how it's been going through the delivery of um, each of those pieces of work that we do. So I um, just wanted to clarify, um, you know, we're all probably quite used to looking for support from funding agencies and the like. Um, there are some things that the service can't support at the moment, um, but it is quite broad. So it's anything aligned with essential freshwater reform package, effectively anything around water quality improvement outcomes across New Zealand. Um, we are looking to learn and adapt about what um, people might be needing and wanting, um, but at the moment we can't um, specifically pay for monitoring or lab costs. So as an example, the service can provide some advice about what kind of analytes you might need to um, look for and depending on the outcome you're looking for um, and maybe where they might be located in terms of the location of taking some samples, but the actual specific taking of samples um, is uh, not within the realm of the funding support at this stage. Um, we also probably not too relevant for uh, catchment groups, but we're not really um, supporting modeling of large catchments, e.g. modeling of nutrient um, outputs from a whole catchment. So that's not in at the moment. Um, and we kind of need a really clear purpose or scope, uh, an issue that we can use um, and, <coughs> excuse me, that we can define for an expert to come support with. Just going to mute myself to cough again. Sorry about that. Um, and finally, I guess we have, um, we know that there's quite a lot of support or um, we knew there was a lot of support pre two days ago for freshwater farm plan implementation. That's specifically out of scope right now. So we can't support freshwater farm plans, but we'll need to watch the space as the policy agenda and central government imperative comes through and we get more certainty. Um, there's a discretionary approach to kind of how much we support individual funds. We do wanna make sure that we're um, sharing the love across New Zealand and across um, regions and across the different type of topics that we're supporting. So um, there's no specific direction on that, but just um, can't allocate lots and lots of money to one case when we might be able to make some impact across the realm. But we're uh, happy to um, talk more specifically with individual people um, if you've got an idea that might um, really be beneficial. So here's just an example of the jobs that we've got going at the moment across New Zealand. Um, uh, and you can see that we've got a nice regional spread and you can see that we've got a range of different topics that we've kind of classified them in. Um, so there's a number around um, nutrients or nutrient limit setting, sediment reduction, mahingakai, te mana o te wai, uh, wetland management and a few other things in there. Um, we are matching up a range of, I've just seen a question come through, uh, we're matching up a range of um, different um, Māori or um, Māori specialists um, to help support catchment groups and iwi um, in um, developing understanding of and, and kind of the policy outcomes for them. In fact, it's probably a really good segue into, I think, which is our next slide, which is, um, it's not our next slide. We'll talk about that shortly. I'll talk about that shortly. Um, but I'll hand over to Gemma um, about one of the catchment group as an example of um, what we've been supporting with the brokerage today. Thanks, Ray. Um, kia ora koutou. Um, as mentioned, I'm Gemma and I'm on the um, A2E brokerage team. Um, so I'm one of the people you might um, expect to speak to when you call up or um, who would respond to you um, as you're providing your 
um, requests through those channels that Ray mentioned and that we'll share again at the end. Um, we just, before we get into the Q&A about the processes and things like that, um, just wanted to give you a wee bit of a flavour of some of the cases that we have been supporting or um, are currently supporting. Um, so um, this this one here, um, the client is the Huranui District Land Care Group, um, which are doing a lot of great outreach work in the Huranui District in Canterbury. Um, and so this particular project is working with um, Huranui District Land Care um, to, I guess, connect um, an expert in ecology um, and water quality to um, a number of catchment groups throughout the district. So this one's quite far reaching. I think there's about 10 different groups um, that they're providing support to, um, to, I guess, lift engagement um, with their streams and their catchment, understanding some of the ecological and water quality monitoring techniques and information you get out of those. Um, and so the expert on this one is James Lambie from Lambie Ecology uh, on our panel. Um, and in addition to this kind of capability enhancement exercise, um, we'll be providing um, summary assessments to each catchment group of what was undertaken on the day, what the results were, and touch on some kind of positive actions um, in the context of the land use um, that could be undertaken to kind of elevate the um, freshwater outcomes in, in the area there. So that's really exciting. So uh, the example that I was going to talk about, um, we have uh, been supporting the iwi in Te Tauihu, uh, for a wānanga series of events across the last few months, where um, a, the group of the iwi in the top of the south have been um, have created a forum for them to interact with the regional councils um, in the same area. So. Um, having really good um, conversations about what the freshwater reform package is expecting from them and how that might be developed into policy making. So there's quite a lot of work in that space. Um, we have supported a range of different Mātauranga Māori um, specialists um, to provide effectively their thoughts, high level advice and um, practice examples from across the rest of New Zealand um, to share with Te Tauhu, the, the group in Te Tauhu, um, both iwi and the regional council policy and sciences, science functions to give them some context and flavour about what that might look like for the um, policy making under the NPSFM around mahinga kai, uh, te mano te wai and um, uh, and how you might measure and quantify some of those outcomes. So just on the very left of this picture is um, Ian Ruru, who is a Mahinga Kai specialist uh, and wrote the guidance around Mahinga Kai for the Ministry for the Environment. Um, and um, at other Wananga, we've also had um, other players like uh, Kipper Morgan, who has provided some overview of, um, um, I guess, monitoring or measurement tools that could be applied in that kind of series. Um, there's been some great feedback to date, and we're looking forward to support them further in um, collaborating and developing what that might look like from a mātauranga and um, te mana o te wai sense for uh, that region. Oh, and just another um, catchment group example here. Um, we have just in the process of kicking off or starting work on some cases with Tuki Tuki Land Care, um, who um, are also an organisation um, that connect a number of different catchment groups uh, within um, the Rohi in the Hawke's Bay. Um, so just a couple of examples I wanted to touch on here to give um, some more ideas about what we can help with. Um, so with the um, Mangarara um, catchment, we're providing um, expertise and um, supporting on work that's already underway in identifying suitable erosion control and silt retention methods for that stream, um, working with the catchment group members to identify, I guess, hot spots that they're aware of, and um, that will include a site visit and um, different workshopping to work through how um, 
some of those methods could be implemented. So we've got Matt Highway from Element Environmental providing support on that. And then also for the Kahaha Kuri stream, um, we're providing some other um, support on managing um, Calcrest um, through consideration of different water quality and flow drivers, um, and also supporting um, that group with um, bank erosion mitigation at different areas they have identified as well, um, considering channel dynamics and um, riparian planting, um, for example. So we've got specialists in those areas um, from Massey University, Ranveer Singh and Ian Fuller, who will be working on that case. Oops, sorry. So um, that's just a couple of um, use cases for the service that we've been working through in the last couple of months, just to give a bit of a flavour for what we have been able to support um, and some of the ideas out there from community groups and other users um, that are there. So we're happy to, I guess, go wider with questions now. Um, maybe we'll, if Bridget, you can help us with that process? Sure. Um, maybe we can just start off with um, a question from Cheryl around um, access to access or funding for Maturanga Māori expertise. So Ray, I know you touched on it. Do you want to maybe just give a bit more detail on that? Yeah, sure. There's um, there's a number of uh, Maturanga or, or maybe even more specific experts um, uh, with a Māori background um, on the expert panel already. We work um, with the users out there to um, understand their needs. Um, maybe if they have a particular person that they know are an expert in that space that might need a bit of resourcing to help um, but are keen to help, uh, we can work with that as well. Um, but we do have a, a range of different um, experts in that space across New Zealand um, available right now. And we can test that uh, with individual users around, um, you know, their connection to um, your area um, and also uh, that kind of level of expertise and the relevance of that to what you're looking for specifically. Um, and then just a question we received from a bit earlier. Um, can the total value of the time Becca and the expert be reported to the group at the end of the project when you do report delivery, just to help groups show in-kind value when they do future grant applications? Is that something that you can provide? So, sorry, I, I um, think I heard, can we provide the value of the kind of expert piece of work given um, and that's kind of used as a rough summary of the in-kind effort? Is that Yes, correct. So can, get, can that information be provided? Um, I don't see why not. Um, we could definitely give a summary at the completion of that on the um, service value provided. Mm -hmm. um, I can see how that would be useful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then just going to the, the chat box. Um, is there support for a wetland community group to decipher local council district plans? So in, for example, to um, so that they can put a submission together? Is that the kind of thing that um, access to experts Def can do? Yep, definitely happy to um, provide uh, either a planner or a wetland expert or maybe a, a, a join up of two of those types of people to help with that kind of work. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. absolutely something that the, um, that the service can help with. Mm -hmm. Right, and then a question as well from... Uh, previous um, will change of government have any impact on the project, um, i.e. funding before the project finishes? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I just struggled to um, hear the first part of that. Could you just say that again? Will there be any, um, will there be any, any implications around um, um, impact on the project with regards to change of government, with regards to funding? So that's a question that we just got in from, from previous. Yeah. Um, It'd be fair to say that um, it's shifting times at the moment. It's um, day one in the first 100 days of the new government and their plan, um, and there's not a lot of clarity around what outcomes they're really looking for and how 
those changes might influence us. What, what we're doing is that we're working on um, what we were asked to do at the beginning of the project and continuing on that process uh, until such time as we get a better understanding. So um, it's a really good time actually to get some ideas into the mix because we're really clear on what we can support now um, and you know it's possible that that might change but we're really hopeful that um, you know there is real value in this and um, mm -hmm. the more stories we can tell about the value um, the better. Mm, good point and I think getting get in now would be a good take home on that one. Um, Elliot was asking do you have any access to funding for action so planting fencing, constructing wetlands, fish passage remediation, that kind of work? I'm just conscious we don't want to hear from me all the time. Um, I'll answer this one and then I'm just going to ask Gemma to answer the next couple. Uh, so give the hard ones to her. Um, <laughs> the, so funding for actions um, is, is quite close to some of the implementation stuff that was is um, not able to be supported at this time. So we, we for example, probably can't pay for um, plants for riparian margin planting, um, or I suppose fencing and fence posts. Um, but if there was any advice around kind of riparian offset, um, uh, how much land might be best to retire, um, if you needed some of that, um, that kind of thing, the advice component we can, or the plan making part, but not the actual implementation. That's mm -hmm. the scope of what we can and can't support at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would need to be complementary funding from other sources, I imagine. Mm, yeah, there's there is actually quite a lot of other mm. funding source out there that might be able to assist, and we are developing, um, you know, a better connection to some of those others through MPI um, and um, other kind of um, local government resources. That um, if we do know of the menu. Mm put that into us and we can't quite support that, um, we'll try to connect you up with others who might be able to. Mm -hmm. um, a question from Cheryl is, how does the support um, align with groups such as Mountains to Sea, who already provide support or training in freshwater monitoring for community groups? Hi, I'll, I'll have a go at that. <laughs> you might also need Ray to supplement. So um, I guess, yeah, what we're some of the examples we gave, um, I guess, might be somewhat aligned with Mountains to Sea of providing training to groups, but I suppose we are also trying to provide some of that, I guess, background science lens, um, some of the more interpretation of um, of water quality results and next steps um, for actions on farms. So some of it might, I guess, where it might be different might be getting yeah advice from some of the CRIs or universities who have some more of that kind of research background and um, yeah ability to interpret results and um, mm -hmm. yeah in a more yeah. scientific manner rather than um, training the how to undertake sampling um, and appreciate I might not yeah I have some understanding of mountains to see so I don't want to speak fully on the behalf but that's what I understand mm. the difference and I think one of, one of the key differences is as well is that um the access to expert services around a work package that gets done and then then that's it as opposed to an ongoing support um for mm. for groups right yeah yeah ability to I guess build on a, an initial package of work mm. and open to having conversations about varying the package but yeah yeah that's it and then Justin says, uh, using the Tuki Tuki example, how does um oh, okay, so how does ACE work? ACE is a different project. <laughs> Us and our acronyms. Um I'm assuming you're meaning the access to experts help groups link in with what regional councils are trying to do in the space. Um yes, I guess I'm aware that Tuki Tuki Link here, yeah, have some um, potential amount of funding from um Hawke's Bay Regional Council potentially that they are able to distribute to groups I think I think it's just kind of a different mechanism in applying for the funding and I guess we um, could just be looked to to build on what is happening in that space and try and work with people to complement what what they're doing as much as possible and it's another avenue to get some additional advice. Mm -hmm. 
maybe just to build on that and uh, not not in the tuki tuki context but certainly there are a number of um cases that we're seeing come through that um you know they they're thinking about what um we can support as access to experts and um marrying up some of that scope with some of the other support that they can get to bring together a package and you know that's uh it's complementary it's not um it's not one or the other and then jamie wants to know who decides what the scope of work is when comparing between catchments so for example um if the one is 30,000 hectares um doing catchment sediment catchment bound work and erosion control does this include any flood management expertise around removal of crack willow and replacement with new planting that doesn't spread so I suppose the question is around the scope. Who's the yeah, team? I think um, it's, it's so I, I'm not sure we can give really clear guidance um, in terms of application for um, generally, but in, in that kind of example, um, we do want to make sure that we're connecting with the right um, personnel at the right level uh, so what I mean by that is um, if there is a large catchment that is doing some catch um, sediment catchment bund work and erosion control and um, a catchment group wants to be part of the solution in that um, that's great and we can provide some advice on that we if it extended into flood management and the like there's a regional council function there that we would want to make sure that we were um, aligned with and um, we have been discussing with some catchment groups where they have been thinking about things like this um, in terms of um, asset management from a flood protection sense. Um, and we need to make sure that we're aligned with the um, regional council offices um, and we're adding um, to the value that they're trying to generate too. And, uh, um, and I guess that's really glib because I know that there's going to be tension in there um, but we do need to make sure that we've got all of the stakeholders in the room and talking about the outcome and we can bring along the support that might make sense in the context as long as we know that we've got the um, stakeholders agreeing on the outcome mm. Mm. and then um, if you could just give a bit of a sense of um, the expert panelists or the expert panel and how do you go about selecting you know how do you match them up with with applications and what's the what's the general process involved Cool. Um, well, yeah, I guess sort of as briefly mentioned, we have a range of different consultants, um, university researchers and um, people from Crown Research Institutes on the panel. And we've tried to be cognizant of getting a good spread across the country. So I guess um, one of the first things we look at um, when a case comes in is our database and location um, to see who is um, in, in that area, um, when we are getting, um, I guess, the experts on boarded, we um, try and meet with them and discuss their background as much as possible and glean information from their CV to um, enter all everything that's relevant into our, our database. So um, when we are having those discussions with the users, we're able to go and, I guess, look at... Um, the experts to see who is most relevant, um, what level of experience might be required um, and some of their yeah, qualifications and recent experience. So we do have sort of a few questions, I guess, to filter that sort of filters through and provides potential options. Um, and then we kind of have a bit of a system to assess who might be most appropriate based on all that um, information. Um, I guess we do, yeah, try and have those discussions as well where um, a user might have a specific expert in mind or has been working with um, to match them up with them. Awesome. Um, and then just on um, expertise on river management and restoration, um, have you found any competing, underlying competing interests in the rural context at all or has that been an issue that you've, that you've found? Um, sorry, I probably just need to digest that a wee bit. <laughs> I do, yeah, I might need a wee bit more context, but I guess, yeah. Uh. I think, um, I mean, I think if 
I'm trying to interpret or read between the lines of what you might be asking there. Um, uh, if there is advice from one subject matter expert that might conflict with another, um, uh, I guess we kind of need to think about the type of um, issue that we're trying to answer the question for. Um, we are um, in the brokerage, you know, a range of environmental scientists that work in a freshwater management space. So we are relatively um, connected to what we might need to think about. So we're not saying that we're infallible, but um, we do tend to think about these broadly from a catchment or holistic basis. So um, I'm not sure if that's answering the question. Um, but we do want to make sure that the work we support um, is able to integrate a range of different kind of technical disciplines. And if that does mean we bring on more than one subject matter expert in a restoration versus hydrology space, then um, to answer a question or to help answer a question, that's that's what we will do and what we have been doing in other circumstances. Mm -hmm. If you want to clarify what you, um, if that didn't help answer the question, happy to take a clarification. Um, and then I think you might have addressed Jamie's question around um, workshop training. So that's that's in principle something that the fund would, or would the service would be able to support, um, training on pathways to water from land use, E. coli, nitrogen. That would come into yes. nutrient management, right? Yep, that mm -hmm. would be. That sounds really, um, really well mm -hmm. aligned with what we can support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've yeah. started talking about something similar with a group already about working towards getting like a few panel members um, in sort of early next year with the catchment group, um, like quite a big catchment and yeah, working through different issues and um, mitigations and kind of, yeah, sort of sanity checking what are like the quick wins and what are, you know, what might, what benefits you might be able to expect relative to each other and working through that kind of thing in a workshop environment yeah mm -hmm. and then just a point on the process um so Cheryl's asking if there's an application form do you guys want to just chat about what exactly the process is if you have a maybe from the start how do you even what's the kind of step one sure so um yeah, I guess the way to get in touch is via the form. There'll be like a I need advice or submit your case or something like that button um, on the website that's um, listed here. Um, and then our email address is um, also on the um, on the website. So that is probably a couple of the, in terms of getting details on paper, the way to initially start that. Um, and then we try and get in touch generally within the week or, or as soon as possible to set up a conversation or have a few email comms just to understand exactly what the case is. So it's not like a big funding um, application. Usually within a 15 minute conversation, we get a good idea of what um, people are looking for. Um, and most of the things we've been um, picking up lately are eligible and it's quite easy to progress from there and then start working up kind of the outline and sort of boundaries of what they're after and what we can provide. So it's not um, a super strenuous process. We've also got the phone number there and we are manning the hotline. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and um, the Landcare Trust uh, regional coordinators have been helping with some of the catchment groups to support those applications, just to refine them. Um, That's just right. Just to define them a little bit nice, uh, just to you know put a bit of kind of um, scope around them um, before they go in. So you're welcome to reach out to any of the coordinators. Um, yeah, I think da -da -da. Oh, Jamie has the follow-up. It's the second part. Um, I, um, Jamie, I can see your question there. I actually tried to type a message back to you, but I don't think you saw it um, because I think I only sent it to the hosts and panelists and I don't know how to send it to everyone. Um, I, I think, Jamie, look, we, we should have a conversation about that um, and we're happy to take that by um, our number or um, if you lodge something in, on our website, we, we can definitely connect with you and just see what we can do. Um, understand that, you know, it's a horse, uh, um, horses for courses lost the lost the train of thought there um on on some of the stuff and um would be great to have um, an opportunity to just have a chat about what what you're looking for um and what 
already exists and um, you know what the what the other stakeholders might be doing if anything uh, in that so uh, take it from there hmm. Uh, and then, yes, um, it is limited. I think the service will run until 2025, um, at least. Well, not at least, but up until. That's that's the latest it will run until. So it is a good idea to, if you do have a concept in mind, um, get in if the timing is right for you. Okay, I think that covers all the other questions. Um, if there's anything else, please do get in touch with the team, um, whether it's whether you're in touch with the NZLT, the Nanke Plus coordinators, um, or through the website with, with the team. I'll hand over to Ray to close up. Thanks, Bridget. Um, I've noticed Nicole just asked one final question. Um, I, it's quite possible, Nicole, that designing a small wetland would be in scope. We just need to align it with an outcome that the freshwater reform is looking to achieve. I'm sure that that's quite straightforward. We just need to hear a little bit more about it. So it'd be great to um, talk or to hear a little bit more about it. So happy to talk um, on our hotline or, um, or by email, whichever works for you. Thank you everyone for your time and your questions. It's been great to engage um, and happy as ever to um, keep talking on those um, various channels. I'll just close up with a karakia. Um, unihia, unihia, unihia ki te ure tapanui, kia wātia, kia māma, te nāko, te tinana, te wairo i te ara takata, koia rā e rongo, whakaere ake ki runga, kia tina, tina, huie, tai ki Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Kia kite.